The writings on the wall regarding overfishing of our world's oceans. Our wild fisheries are somewhat tapped out or, or, or capped out, I should say. Our wild fisheries are capped out. And likewise, so are the forage fish that we use to feed the carnivorous fish. That's capped out too. Those natural resources, these bait fish that are used in the diets is gonna become limiting. And it's, a, it's an environmental issue relative to the limiting resources and it's an economic issue relative to uh, as it becomes limiting, the cost goes up, which makes the diets that much more expensive. In this day and age, when you have the middle class in the, of the world, it's getting uh, increasingly, you know, consumption is going up. The demand for fish is increasing every day. And it's becoming increasingly hard for us to source fish. So between the growing demand and the restricted supply, aquaculture's got to fill that gap. One of the exciting things that's happened in the, in the last few years is we partnered up with Pacifico Aquaculture which is a commercial co company located down in, in Mexico uh, who has extensive experience in cage farming. So it's not just about trying to learn things here in the laboratory. We're taking it out in the field and working with guys in the commercial industry to really, which is where the proof's in the pudding. Uh, you know, if it's gonna work, it's gotta work out in their hands. So again, uh, that's a real uh, exciting part of this partnership as well. Okay, Rexito, my partner in Pacifico, and I met about 15 years ago in the, in the bluefin tuna industry, but we've been working out here at, the, at Pacifico now for the last three years. Uh, we chose this site because it's hand, hands down the best aquaculture site in, in northern Baja and because it's so close to the, the prime market in Los Angeles. Uh, environmentally, uh, we have 173 hectares of ocean here, and we're permitted for 72 cages for four different species, yellowtail, striped bass, white sea bass, and, and halibut. Uh, looking forward to 7,000 tons of production yearly once we get up to speed. Uh, beautiful oceanic water here at the site. We have a submarine canyon uh, about a quarter mile offshore that drops down to 250 meters deep, which provides great cleansing there at the site. So at Pacifica, we buy all of our white sea bass fingerlings from Hub Sea World Research Institute because they're the sole provider for those fingerlings. In terms of the species that we're working with, again, these are species that people like to catch and eat. So white sea bass is the main species that we're working on here. It's, uh, it's quite remarkable. The marine hatchery that we're visiting here today is the only marine hatchery on the whole west coast of the United States. So the kinds of things that we're doing are incredibly innovative. It's all brand new. Um, which makes it that much more exciting. So right now we're at the uh, one of the broodstock tanks here for white sea bass, which is the primary species that we culture. And the whole purpose for these broodstock, these are wild caught adult fish that supply the eggs for us, which is the starting point for the whole culture process. So you can see I've gathered up some eggs here and this uh, floating fraction up at the top in the seawater is made up of thousands and thousands of eggs. So for us in this facility, what we do is just provide optimal rearing conditions uh, for the different life stages going from this up to a juvenile fish before they're put out into cages. Okay, so the species that we're working on, the white sea bass, is a local species, it's a native species. It's found uh, in Southern California. It'll range up to San Francisco and down into Baja California, Mexico. There's also an isolated population in the Sea of Cortez. Right here, we're in the juvenile rearing area, so these are the fish that are a fingerling size, and these are fish that are ready to go out to net pens. Once you understand exactly what they need, you can start to explore some other areas, and we're doing that on many different levels uh, relative to the sustainability of this industry and our practices. One of those key aspects related to sustainability is what's in these diets. Typically, what's in a diet like this is fish meal and fish oil. Well, as aquaculture continues to increase the way it needs to in order to supply seafood for the, for the world, those resources aren't gonna be able to keep up. So what we've been doing for the last few years is working with different uh, research organizations and uh, industries and trying to uh, supplement that or replace fish meal and fish oil. One of the areas we've been very successful in recent years is looking at soybean meal and soy oil, and we're getting some very, very promising results. Ultimately, we will be able to shift over to a diet that is largely alternative proteins, including plant-based proteins like soybean meal and soy oil.
Okay, so what's going on here is the guys, uh, there's been one load of fish that have already come out of this tank and have been loaded into the transport boxes that are put on a truck. The truck goes up to Oceanside Harbor where the fish get offloaded onto a boat for transport down to Mexico. Okay, so here we are in the port of Oceanside. Uh, we're receiving white sea bass today from hubs. Uh, we're loading the fish onto the boat now, onto the wells of the Santa Paola. Uh, about 17,000 fish we're gonna take on this trip today, 17, 18,000 fish. The, the wells of the boat will load to a density of about 16, 17 kilos per cubic meter, so it'll be a light load for us. We can work all the way to 20, 25 kilos per cubic meter. And uh, these fish will be loaded on the boat. We'll be leaving here at about 3.30 in the afternoon. In 12 hours, the fish will arrive to the site in, in Ensenada at Todos Santos Island. And by about 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, these fish will be stocked and swimming in the cages, the grow out cages. Beautiful, beautiful looking fish today. saturation and uh, temperature. Make sure it sustains the right amount so the fish can survive well. Oxygen's uh, nice and uh, so is the temperature. So yeah, they're nice and happy to swim around in here. <laughs> Ready for their unload into the pen. Okay, so we're in the unloading process now of the, of the white sea bass. And what we do is we lower the water down in the wells. We put the diver inside and he nets out the fish nice and slow. That way the fish really don't they don't get crowded, they don't get excited, they stay calm and relaxed, and they're in the cage within minutes. In aquaculture, uh, probably the most important part is water quality. And uh, this site is only seven miles offshore from Ensenada. The water quality is excellent. It's a perfect site for, for fish culture. So the particular species that we're working with here at the, at the, at the site in Pacifico, striped bass and white sea bass, are very efficient growers. We've got the striped bass down to an FCR, feed conversion ratio, which is the amount of feed that goes into a fish to produce one kilo of biomass. With our striped bass, we're at about 1.26, and with the white sea bass at about 1.4 to 1.6. They're very efficient feeders. As in any fish farm, feed is about 50% of our budget, so it's critical for Pacifico, working with the American Soybean Association to find economically viable feeds, but at the same time, environmentally responsible feeds. For the past six months, we've been working on obtaining our certification for best aquaculture practices. We've just received that, uh, which indicates that we're doing a responsible, sustainable approach to aquaculture and minimizing our dependency on fish meal and fish oil. The great thing about the location of our farm is that we could literally harvest fish in the morning and that fish can be eaten in a restaurant within 24 hours. We take orders from our customers, plan a harvest for exactly the amount of fish we're gonna harvest that day. And we'll have the harvest in the morning, early in the morning. The fish will be then sent to the mainland and on a truck into our warehouse in Los Angeles within 12 hours. So that fish that was caught that morning literally can be at a restaurant in 24 hours. Okay, we're here at Santa Monica Seafood in Rancho Dominguez, California, um, just outside of LAX. Uh, we are a processing plant for uh, fresh fish from all over the world uh, that we deliver out to restaurants from Las Vegas and Arizona down to Mexico and up to Santa Barbara and Monterey. Essentially, we just we receive fish 24-7. Um, we bring it in, we weigh it, we check the quality, and then we just start processing it. Converting it into fillets, converting it into portions, and then packaging it up, getting it into our trucks, and delivering it out to all of our customers all over the Southland. It is absolutely the freshest fresh fish you can possibly have. It is great sashimi. In fact, the less you cook it, the better. Um, and again, for us, it's very exciting. It's a plate-sized fish for our customers. Um, and very exciting for our chefs. 
This is good condition. It's good fresh, and it's uh, texture is so good, nice and muscle is very tight. So it's very nice, good condition. The sashimi quality, you can see the color of the beauty. It is uh, almost a half transparency. It's not all white, white. And then uh, texture. And so you're feeding all the it's a knife going into the meat. It's uh, great textures we have in here. Uh, I don't know, not too soft. They're not too tight either. But nice, just right textures we were. Well, we can see the farm raising is, is coming with uh, 24 hours, and then not only the season fishes. So we can provide any whole season. That's a good thing also. What's great about this uh, particular farm is that they're using um, fish meal replacement in the form of soybean. So the only way we're really going to be able to sustainably grow aquaculture going into the future is by replacing fish meal with something else. And soybean meal is one of the best for that. So you think we have a winner there? Shouldn't be, shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, no problem, number one. <laughs>